so we're in the book uh, in his steps well let's just call this book what would jesus do because that's what the book's about so we went through up until i think chapter 12 so i'm going to start at chapter 12 and hopefully i won't repeat myself in much other but um we got to the point you remember who virginia was virginia is this heiress that she's inherited you know uh, lots of money um, from her parents who had died and she's made a pledge the pledge given um, at the church of what would Jesus do and for a year to do whatever Jesus would do along with um, some other characters that we've also talked about before and so um, basically Virginia is meeting with her friends and some of her friends are these well-to-do ladies and they're just thinking well we can go down slumming with Virginia you know and see what's going down there in the rectangle because none of these these girls these fashionable girls would go down these fashionable ladies they're just very curious curious of what's going on down there <clears throat> and they ask questions about Rollin and say well you know Rollin you know Virginia's brother <coughs> he is not he is not you know going down to the clubs anymore and meeting them he's actually going down to the rectangle too and what about this, you know, singer? What what about um, Rachel Winslow? She could have got a job and made tons of money, um, you know, singing in the clubs and, and you know, going, going in the secular way of music. And now she's down there at that rectangle. They're all thinking those things. So as they get in, in the carriage, and here's a Virginia, she's with them and explaining them about the rectangle, actually witnessing to them about Jesus too. And suddenly out of one of the bars comes um, Laureen. Who is Laureen? Laureen is the girl that, that Virginia prayed for um, to come to the Lord, to come to know Jesus. That she prayed for her salvation and, and that she um, actually, you know, had been, you know, seen for quite a while, you know, at the, at the, the tent revivals that were going on. And so she sees Lorene stumbling and coming out of the, the saloon, stumbling and falling and, you know, and totally, totally drunk. So she stops in the carriage. And of course, the ladies in the carriage are like speechless. And they, can we help? What can we do? She said, no, 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 I must get out. And you got, you, the, the you coach, the driver will take you, take you home. I must get out and, and I must do what Jesus would have me do and help Lorene. So she gets out, she walks over, finds where Lorene is, you know, and she's walking, you know, here, here in the midst of the rectangle and everyone's looking on, you know, people thinking, what is she doing here? Anyway, she, she basically comes and of course, Lorene says, leave me alone, you know, let me go to hell, you know, that's where I belong. I just belong in hell. And then, um, the, the people around are looking and seeing what's going to happen next. And, and Lorene says, come with me. You don't belong to hell. You belong to Jesus. And so we can go find Mr. Gray and we'll find him. He'll have some place to board you. And so she helps her along the way to go over where the tent of the meeting is there. And going, and going there, she finds out that no, there is no place. And she says, where do you live, Lorene? She's like, I just live in the saloon. I just live in the street. And basically, um, Virginia then is thinking, oh, my goodness, you know, what would Jesus do? Well, she's going to take Lorraine home with her. She ends up uh, getting a taxi, taking Lorraine home. And, but, who lives with her? Her grandmother. Her grandmother is so upset, you know, and she says, Grandma, she's in trouble and I'm taking care of her. She has no place to go. What would Jesus do? I signed the pledge. And Grandma, she's a child of God. And so Grandma clenched her hands and said, no way, no way. You know, what are people gonna think when you bring her in, in there? You need to just take her to her asylum. Get her out of here. This is ridiculous. What kind of pledge is this that you've taken? This and in, in this house, I am not going to stay in the same house as she is. You know, if if you love me, then you're going to get rid of her. And of course, Lorene says, Grandma, this house is mine. You know, it's your home too if you want to live here. But we, we have to do in this house, what would Jesus do? 
And so her grandmother says, is unwilling to, to, to stay. And she says, well, you can say you've driven your grandmother out. Chapter 13, her grandmother lives. Uh, of course, Rollin, her brother is transformed as he has accepted Jesus. And also um, their um, uncle, Dr. West took the Jesus pledge too. And so he shows up and they all, they all chip in to help Lorene. And Lorene ends up, you know, so happy, so thinking, wow, here I am living in a mansion. Because indeed, the Page Mansion where Rollin and Virginia lived um, was beautiful. And, and basically, they had their own servants to help too. But Lorene is so thankful, thankful that God would even... Um, count her to be able to um, be there. So in the meantime, Virginia and Lorene become great friends and they're going down practically every night down to the rectangle and Lorene's giving her testimony and sharing Jesus and, and, and so is Virginia and together they're friends. And they're also friends with their friend, Rachel Winslow, who's singing and um, Rollin too. And so here we have a great revival still happening. Well, of course, the enemy, you know, once things start um, becoming, you know, um, apparent that God's doing such a great work, the enemy wants to attack, right? And does attack in many ways. So we find here, basically, um, the President Marsh, you know, as we said, he was against the saloons. And so he's standing up politically that the, so those saloons need to be closed. I mean, they are um, totally horrific places. And so he's standing up and of course then the, the saloon um, owners and um, a lot of, you know, those wealthy political men that are very, very corrupt, you know, they're sending in to start another, to start a riot in the midst of this a drunken riot riot and so here they all come rachel virginia laureen rollin dr west president marsh you know mr maxwell um and um the, the, the uh the mr or uh, mr max maxwell the the uh, pastor onto the others that had made that some of the others that had made the pledge and they're down there and with um Pastor Gray and, you know, giving the message and it's great, seems like a great, great time. And they close up and they go out and there's like a drunken riot outside. Totally a riot. And they start throwing um, stones at him, throwing rocks at him. And so, um, you know, Rollin jumps over in front of um, Rachel, um, the singer, and, and protects her. And he gets, he gets hit by a rock. And then, uh, um, Another rock comes towards Virginia and Laureen, she jumps, she jumps in front of that rock. But in the meantime, the same time as that happens, someone throws this huge, you know, um, gigantic um, pitcher, I should say, or, um, you know, this vase, huge thing that out of the window of, this, of the um, saloon and hits um, Laureen smack dab on the head so hard. Marine falls back. It breaks in her head. She's he, she's um, bleeding and she let, falls down on the ground and she's bleeding and she's almost unconscious and she comes back. She opens her eyes and, and Virginia's standing over her um, and, you know, praying for her though. She's standing over and says, are you going to be, are you going to live? And she opens her eyes and she smiles at Virginia and she said, basically, knew that she was not going to survive this. And so, you know, um, Virginia hugs Lorene and um, Lorene goes to be with Jesus. Hmm. So, wow, things are getting kind of uh, um, um, uh, totally messy, you know, how things get messy. <laughs> and then it's thinking, okay, this is great. People are getting saved. The enemy steps in. And chapter 15 says, um, He that follows me shall not walk in darkness. That's what Jesus said. So, uh, Lorene takes the body, or um, 
Virginia takes the body of Loreen to the Page Mansion. And there, you know, thinks we, we need to have a funeral. And he organizes the funeral. The church bells are ringing. The people are all, you know, um, coming and, you know, praying for Virginia. And Virginia's thinking we should have we should have the funeral down there at the rectangle at the tent of the meeting. And so she says, what would Jesus do? So she organizes the, the funeral there. And of course the persecution is going on, but the people down at the rectangle, they see what care that, you know, Virginia and these people that have come down sharing the gospel, what, how they care for, cared for her. And so um, Rachel, at the funeral, um, Rachel begins to sing. And as Rachel begins to sing, her voice broke for the first time, and she starts sobbing. There's silence there, a baptism of tears. Everyone's, you know, crying. And they look, and people are gathered all around from the rectangle. You know, all of the alcoholics and all of the, you know, street people, and especially a lot of women at that time. And these women come, and they're so moved by the death of Loreen um, that they start singing and um, start singing and start singing praises. A lot of them coming to Jesus at that moment, giving their hearts to Jesus. And some of them had already done, had already given, given their lives to Jesus. So there was this immense audience. It overflowed this public funeral there. And they even had drew in some of the, some of a crowd and a, a reporter from a newspaper from Chicago was there and he was reporting about this is very unusual that he was passing there. He says a very unique and unusual fur, uh, funeral service um, at the tent of Reverend John Gray in the slum of the rectangle. Uh, a woman was killed during the election last Saturday night and uh, she was a recent convert. Um, during the evangelistic meeting and as it was returning and now um, in this common street she was just a common street drunkard yet the services at the tent were impressive more than I've ever witnessed in this metropolitan church is um, a distinguished every distinguished citizen's mixture with those on the street so he was describing what was going on in the rectangle at this funeral bringing it into the newspapers of Chicago. So you can imagine. So here we have um, most ex ex uh, ex uh, exquisite, I'm sorry, exquisite choir. And it was part of the music and the solo was sung by a, a strikingly beautiful woman, Miss Winslow. She is the young singer who sought for the national opera but she refused the offer to go to stage to sing in the slums. He described everything as this peculiar service and this evangelist that spoke so simply in just a few words were followed by fine looking, uh, this fine looking Reverend Henry Maxfield got there and he spoke to the woman, um, women that had been, that had, um, had it gathered there. And so the strange service, the, the women in the tent all began to sing, and they sang, I was a wandering sheep that came to Jesus. They were all singing. And so the he goes on and describes this, how impressive the sights were, and how um, how hundreds of people were trying to get in the tent. And this crowd, very rough looking crowd, with a hundred or more of these women, and many of them had been converted at the meetings. And all these women voices so soft and yet so distant. What a beautiful funeral. So this funeral um, um, changed a lot of people's lives. So it goes on, you know, um, the coffin was carried by six women who had given their hearts to the Lord. It goes on that that night God swept over so many, so many souls were one and God swept over by his Holy Spirit more than he's ever seen. Can you imagine how beautiful that would be? 
So chapter 16 goes on with Virginia mourning Lorraine's death. And um, she wanted to do something for these women. All these women now coming to the Jesus. She said, I need to, need to help them. They go down there, there's the saloons and everything. And some of them just live on the street. And she's saying, what can I do? And then she's thought, you know what? I have, I have more money. I have plenty of money. What can I do? And Rollin then comes in and he's too. I want to help too. And so they decide to buy property up in the rectangle, in the slums there. And where the tent is to buy that money and, and build some lodging houses for um, any uh, refugees of the poor women these sh and shops for the girls there and such and, and make this more of a, a town so that so that they could have a place to go and live that was safe some safe houses so she felt with 500 disciples maybe coming in the saloons will be doomed you know basically taking her money and actually wanting to go down there to work in the rectangle and she does then for Rachel, she looks at Rachel, Rachel, the singer, remember, and she knows that Rachel, you know, she's just, how is she going to live? So she says, Rachel, how about, um, would you like to, to um, put together and we'll build a music institute and you could be the teachers? These women have splendid voices and everything that were at the funeral. Maybe some of them will come in and you could teach them your musical abilities. Rachel was flabbergasted. She's like, ah. Oh, what a wonderful idea. What would Jesus do? That's what I want to do as my life work, is to be able to lead people to Jesus, sing for the Lord, worship the Lord, and to teach them, and to teach them music. So now we have wonderful things happen in the midst of tragedy. So going on, we have a, 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 after chap, in chap, the end of chapter 16, we have Rollins. Remember, Rollins is um, is Virginia's brother, and he too has inherited a lot of money. And he basically is talking to Virginia, and he knows she kind of feels that Rollins still is in love with um, Rachel. Um, but of course, you know, Rollins will not go talk to her again because he had before. But we have a conversation here, you know, a conversation that gives us a hint of what's going to happen. Virginia says. Um, to Rachel as Rachel comes in there and Virginia says what happened to Jasper Chase remember him he's the one that the novelist that was writing stories about Rachel because he was in love she goes I suppose he's writing another book and then Virginia says well he's putting you in it and she's like I hope not you know that Jasper proposed to me but I thought I, he, I loved him but I saw in his heart that he didn't have the same love I had for Jesus and so um, Virginia says, I'm glad that, that you didn't marry him. I've never really liked him anyway. And, and Virginia laughs. And she, and she said, well, I'm glad that I never gave my heart to him. But then comes in Rollin, you know, and um, um, Rollin and Virginia have a conversation on the, on the side after Rachel leaves. And Rollin saying, um, you know, I, I really, basically saying, um, I've really loved Rachel for a long time. In fact, he told her, I said, I didn't know, but I, I proposed to her. And, um, but I'm a new man now, and I don't know if she could love me, you know, coming from where I did before, but I still love her. So, basically, he's looking sad and not wanting to really talk to Rachel. But Virginia says, I don't know. Rachel may still love you. In fact, you guys kind of grew up together and you know each other pretty well. And I think she knows you well and she knows your heart that you really love Jesus. So it goes on. We find later on what happens is they end up getting married in the future. Don't you think? Mm-hmm. Oh, so on to chapter 17 comes the newspaper and the newspaper in the midst 
because um, as we find that um, Virginia um, actually has um, donated money to the newspaper to keep it going as a Christian newspaper. And so um, uh, Edward Norman, the newspaper, puts together all that he wants for the newspaper saying, you know, I'm never going to allow a sentence or a picture in the paper that could be called bad. No impure uh, thoughts. You know, on the political part, we're going to be nonpartisan. That means not con controlled by political par parties. But we are going to stand for the kingdom of God and the welfare of the people. And on the main purpose in carrying this newspaper would not to be make money um, or gain political influence. But first, uh, evident to all, um, he wanted to make sure it, that it would seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Don't you love that? So, and going on um, with that, he said, all questionable advertisements would be impossible. No advertisements that um, were risque looking. Um, and on to you know, relations, we, they talk about, you know, what Jesus was doing in the midst and um, give um, all, you know, all the power to fight unrighteousness, to fight against the, the influence of the, the saloons and down, um, you know, not to print things about brutal accounts of like prize fighters and such or scandals or private affairs, but all to the glory of God all to God's kingdom. On to chapter 17. So, Virginia donates $500,000. Can you imagine that much? $500,000 to um, the cause, you know, of the newspaper. So, and Henry Maxwell, um, he didn't go vacation abroad. Instead, he makes his whole summer and his whole family working in the rectangle there. And um, actually he ends up um, giving some of his vacation money to others that needed vacation at that time. Jasper Chase, what happens to him? Um, of course, he has uh, no purpose, you know, but to amuse in his stories. So his book was written, um, secular, for a secular romance and um, he basically said he's going to break his pledge that he never really wanted to give his heart to Jesus. That's a sad day. In the meantime, we see that chapter 18 goes into the, the uh, Rachel and Rollin and walking down the street and talking about um, what Rollin's been doing. And he's also made um, a, a place for men that were that wanted to come to, to come to find refuge in too, but he is also drawn to um, those that were drawn, those friends that were club that went to the clubs and all, and witnessing to them. And as he goes, he's wanting to work in the rectangle too. And Rachel says, "I know your courage." <laughs> and so basically, um, they're drawn together again, and. Uh, um, in honor and the courage, basically, um, they call their love for each other, and, um, and and Rachel thought, "I shall love Roland Page after all." It's kind of a great love story there in the midst of this book. So, what happens next? Because we have a few more chapters. Wow, we see what is going on in um, Raymond now. Um, gets told in other cities. We see, we know the newspaper in Chicago now is hearing about it and the pastor here is writing to another pastor knowing about the pastor in Raymond, Maxwell, and saying the pastor's name is Bruce and he's um, writing to what the bishop, what they call him the bishop, and talking about how their hearts are turned for their churches. So the last chapters, the last chapters from chapter 19 on, you have them describing what has happened in um, Raymond and then going on to this uh, great awakening that will go on into Chicago. So first of all, 
he talks about how remarkable this is. You know, and he says, uh, the, some of these people, Edward Norman, the editor of the Daily News, you know, and what has gone in, in all of that. It goes through, it goes actually through each and each. It says, Mr. Powers, with the superintendent of the um, mission shops, um, the evidence of the railroad, he lost his position on the railroad, but in all that midst, he stood against corruption, even though his family no longer appears in public because they're worried, but um, now he's working at a telegraph operator, but he's gone through this crisis in character. On to Mr. Norman with the daily news uh, and risking his entire fortune for it and now has some interesting and remarkable, you know, stories in his, that are printed in a uh, Christian perspective. On to Milton Wright, the, the merchant, businessman, revolutionized business. Um, no more, no more man is beloved in Raymond. It says, all of the clerks and the employees, they care for him. When he was dangerously ill, they all helped him and came in. They all worked together for the business. No one is best and more respected in, in, as a businessman as he. Mrs. Winslow, Rachel Winslow, great talent given, given to the city, plans to, was planned as a, um, planned to be able to, to travel, be a travel singer with a, the opera. Instead, she has a music institute of, of her own for women and um, those that are uh, less fortunate and being in discipling these women. Miss Virginia Page plans her course, um, um, her course in the midst of the, the whole thing as as donation and it planned um, Miss Winslow's actually marriage to, they ended up getting married, um, uh, Miss Winslow, Rachel Winslow to Roland Page. And in all of this, they do all of their work down in the tent of the, the lowest of class. President March of Lincoln College, he stands up and for the corruption in politics again, and stands up in the common elections of the town. So all of these things are told in chapter 19. As it goes on to chapter 20, huh, we go into what happens. And basically, you know, I'm not going to go through all of these, but, but we see the same thing happening. We have the church pledge coming and so many pledging them. And then the pastor and actually resigning um, to go work. And they built, you know, this, this whole took, bought up this whole area and built this place for all of the, the people to come in the midst of the shadows of, of Chicago. You have Felicia, you know, she, and you'll see in the minute and her, her father, you know, a very, very wealthy man had lost everything. And so he ends up, you know, um, getting shot, shot himself, and on to his wife being so forlorn, dying, and their two daughters, and Felicia one, that was standing up for the Lord Jesus Christ, and God lifting her up, and her, without any money, without any support, goes in, and because she can cook so well, she ends up um, bringing in this whole soup kitchen in the midst, uh, the soup kitchen, and Finding and of course another romance happens with Felicia, and um, and we go on into the whole story of um, the church, you know the bishop and um, and um, him taking over. He actually leads some um, so two guys try to jump him and rob him. He actually leads them to Jesus, and it isn't a coincidence. It seems that one of them, you know. Um, that he had helped one of them a few years ago. And so he takes them in and gets them jobs and helps them and um, overcoming alcoholism, you can see in the midst of Chicago. So uh, towards the end, I'm just skipping towards the end because um, I think you need to read it. <laughs> you know, I'm telling every part of it, but um, basically what would Jesus do? And how the last chapter ends and they're there in the settlement house, and that's the house they built in Chicago. And all these, it's a cold, cold, um, 
day in Chicago. So all of these homeless people and all of these different people, men had come in, you know, to be able to get some food. It was the only place open actually. And they're speaking and they're talking to each other. And the bishop there is, tell, is allowing them, says only three minutes a piece. But one guy gets up and he starts saying, well, what do you mean, what would Jesus do? You know, he says, um, how can everything, no one, all these, how can we find um, work? And it goes all the way back to the, the guy that passed out and died in Raymond. Remember that first guy, that first homeless guy? He said, you know, you think you can do this, but you, but you can't, you know? And he's saying, going into socialism, we need to have the government take over. And he starts talking about communism and socialism being the answer. Um, but really, when it comes down to, to that, he, as he stops, Rachel, or um, Rachel is there, because Rachel and um, Mr. Maxwell, the pastor, come and they're visiting at this time. And Rachel gets up and she sings again. And all of the men and all of those in there, they all look up and think, what would Jesus do? Think, even if you're a homeless, what would Jesus do in your life? And so, what? The dream came, you know, a church obediently following his steps without spot or without wrinkle, the bride of Christ. So this book is foundational in what would Jesus do? And you think about our lives. You think in your life, if I just did everything for the glory of God, what could Jesus do for me? That's what these people thought. They could do nothing. But God's love and God's miracles are far reaching. And in the midst of all of, of this, even though this is a fiction book, we find that it happened because there were great revivals during this time when people stood up came to the Lord and really lived their lives for Jesus. And through all of that, many came into the kingdom of God. So today, what would Jesus do in your life?